because that's four rock songs that I think should have been on the radio. I don't I don't want an album where somebody has to hold my purse to listen to it. I want to rock. Is Vinny trans? I'm like, is he a man or a woman now? You're the ballad man. You're the self-proclaimed pussy ballad guy. This album before Stick It To You? Dude. It didn't help them get the recognition that they were hoping to get with this track. And no. you know, it's about how bitches be wanting to spend all your money. You had me and you lost me on that on the chorus. To me, this is the kind of shit that brought about the downfall of hair metal. And no, you pervert, it deeper and deeper is not about what you think it is. It's First of all, it's the ultimate fuck you to a former bandmate. We cannot forget about the powerhouse that was Bobby Rock. That's good, that's catchy, that <laughs> sucks. You're like, ooh, it's got this and it does this and then he steps on the pedal a little bit harder. Get out the Ritz crackers, everyone, because it's about to get cheesy. I wish I had been in bands because probably would have got a lot more chicks if I had been. You know, that's a band I just never got into. The guy obviously has issues. The guy is obviously talented. That this album was called the Panty Dropper song. When we, we wanted girls to drop their panties, not God. <laughs> Look, I came here to do two things. Chew bubble gum and talk hair metal. And it looks like I'm almost out of bubble gum. Welcome to the hair metal guru for the second time. And I'll tell you about that later. Anyway. My name is Anthony. They call me the guru. And if you see a good looking guy over to my whatever the fuck side he's on, that's Jeremy. You might remember Jeremy from a video we did a while back on the heaviest of the heavy hair metal songs. Well, Jeremy is back. And, and by back, I mean, literally, Jamie, Jeremy is downstairs. Jeremy is a teacher out in North Dakota, but he's in Fargo for the day. And he came over to my house because we have a serious topic to talk about. It's going to be a little bit of slaughter and the Vinny Vincent invasion. I'll get into the details here shortly. But Jeremy, welcome back to the show. What an honor uh, to be here in the House of Hair. I'm literally, as, as you may or may not know, folks, I'm literally right below them. We can hear each other through the ceiling. It's pretty cool. So we got a great dynamic going here. And uh, I just thought, what a great way for us to do this debate than mano a mano. That way, if we need to fist cuffs it out, we have, the, we have the opportunity to do exactly that. So thanks for having me on, buddy. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. I actually have one of, uh, Charlie is outside, but I have one of her shock callers. It's on Jeremy's leg right now. So if he says anything stupid and you see him like, oh, you, yeah, because I hit him with uh, some high, high voltage kicks. That's right. uh, anyway, so so I've just been I've just kind of finished up talking about all the years of hair metal. And Jeremy and I were discussing like, hey, what what's a direction we can go in now? Well, he's a huge fan of the Vinny Vincent invasion. And 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 I am a. Vinnie Vincent Invasion fan as well. And we both like Slaughter's Stick It To Ya. And, you know, the huge connection between that Mark Slaughter and Dana Strum started off in the Vinnie Vincent Invasion, um, put out two albums, even though Mark technically only sang on the second one. They The band breaks up, Dana and, and Mark go on to form Slaughter and release a huge hit in 1990 with Stick It To Ya. So we thought, you know, let's let's go with a battle of the albums. Uh, in a way, it's kind of Slaughter versus Slaughter, Slaughter and Dana ver ver versus their their nemesis, uh, Vinny Vincent. So today we're going to debate which is the better album between Vinny Vincent's All Systems Go and Slaughter's Stick It To You. Now, before we before we get into the gory, greasy details, um, first of all, if you like this kind of shit. Hey, would love it if you subscribe, if you like. I'll obviously would love to hear your opinion on the episode, where you think we went right, where you think we went wrong. Who do you like better, BVI or Slaughter? So I uh, always like to show some framed shit that I have. And this is, is a, a vinyl picture disc, a 12-inch vinyl for the Warrant single Heaven from Dirty Rotten, Filthy Snaking Rich. Most, most people who follow the channel know that I'm a big Warrant guy, big Warrant fan, and, and their biggest hit, Heaven Went to Number Two, and was held off from the number one spot by, you guessed it, Millie Vanilli, which is one of Jeremy's favorite bands. He was actually sporting a Millie Vanilli shirt when he came over. I made him change, put something else on. Okay. Sure anyway, um, Jeremy, uh, what, was your, what was your thought process 
Like, how did you go about researching this? And, you know, what's your thought process going into the battle between Slaughter and the Vinnie Vincent invasion? Yeah, you know, it's kind of one of those deals. Um, Slaughter, obviously, is more mainstream. They did way more, sold way more albums, uh, yeah. had way more hits, singles, all of that stuff. But that aside, I, I think the Vinnie Vincent invasion, maybe due to the rift that Mark and Vinnie had towards the end of that project, um, it kind of gets thrown under the rug. It gets a bad name. And whether you like Vinnie Vincent, hate him, you can't deny he is one of the top five virtuosos to ever play the guitar in that genre. I don't think you'd sure. argue that fact. A a absolutely. So today I, I I wore my, I need to get a slaughter shirt. We were just talking about how like, man, I want a docking shirt. But anyway, I wore my Kiss Lick It Up shirt because there is the, the man or is Vindy trans? I'm like, is he a man or a woman now? Anyway. That's a debate that we could have on another episode. Oh, today. Yeah. So, so anyway, there's the man himself, Vinny Vincent, uh, during Lick It Up. So yeah, the guy's a great songwriter. He put out their, their debut album, the Vinny Vincent Invasion, self-titled debut in 86. Robert Fleischman from Journey sang on that album. But before they even did the first video for Boys Are Gonna Rock, he left the band. So Mark Slaughter comes in, lip syncs the video, even though he wasn't singing on it, does the tour. The album does, you know, middling business, um, but uh, well enough that they get to record the follow-up, All Systems Go. All Systems Go comes out May 17th, 1988. It got to number 64 on Billboard. Had two singles, and, and we'll get into the songs. Album doesn't do all that great. Mark and Dana don't like the direction that, that they're going with Vinnie Vincent, and you'll hear about that in some of the songs in Slaughter. So they go they go off and form Slaughter. Stick It To You comes out two, two years after All Systems Go, January 23rd of 1990, goes to number 18 on Billboard, and goes two times platinum. So, um... But sales don't always tell you the full story. So there's a lot of people who are who are huge, man. And on X, follow me at Hair Metal Guru, trying to get Jeremy onto X here shortly. Um, so he'll be joining the Hair Metal Conversation. And there's a lot of people on X that swear by All Systems Go. And Jeremy's kind of an All Systems Go guy. I tend to be more of a of a stick it to you guy, even though I'm I'm a big Vinny fan. The guy's a great songwriter and, and can obviously shred. So without further ado, here's how it's going to work. Jeremy is going to start with his reasons for why he thinks all systems go is the right way. Man, if you're a new, new hair metal fan, he thinks that's the album you should start with. And I'm going to kind of take the stick it to you side. So Jeremy, without further ado, let us know. Like, like, why, why are you such a Vinnie Vincent Invasion fan? Why do you think All Systems Go is such a great album that you would choose it over the double platinum stick it to you? Absolutely. And, you know, when when we started thinking of this, uh, I'm just going to kind of go right into my homage to the stick it to you and then kind of go from there. So I'm going to go right from my note cards. I'm not even going to try to wing this one. It says, as I sit here thinking of June, I reminisce on the multiple evenings in which I was up all night desperately brainstorming ways in which to present my points without burning bridges with both you and all your many subscribers. It was then that I realized that I have actually spent my life with this music and these bands, as have most of you. It is for that reason that I can't fathom a scenario in which I could be mad about you and I not seeing eye to eye on these comparable, yet also very contrasting pieces of metal hair mastery. After all, you and I have both gave our hearts to this genre and have indulged in the many successes and even those dark times of grief and loss. Now, of course, I'm speaking and referring to the tragic and untimely death of the great Tim Kelly in February of 98. Now, we all know that he was called much too soon to fly to the angels and his loss was felt the rock world over. Fortunately, Mark, Dana, and Blas were able to keep the fires burning when they incorporated Tim's guitar tech, Jeff Blando, as their new loaded gun. You are the one to fill those shoes, they told Jeff. Slaughter forged on after realizing that this band was much like a marriage to a wonderful woman. And you know what? She wants more. 
<laughs> she wants more music, <laughs> tours, albums, and memories. Sadly, we were only awarded one more studio album, The Great Back to Reality with Jeff Blando in the Fray. But what a great encore album to finalize the entire Slaughter catalog. Lucky for us, Slaughter is still out there doing it live today. I can attest, their shows are still fun, energy-filled events, chocked full of hits. How blessed we are to have the opportunity for the boys to stick it to us one more time. So get out the Ritz Crackers. Get out the Ritz Crackers, everyone, because it's about to get cheesy. (laughs) That was the cheesiest fucking thing that has ever been on this channel. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And, and... That was pretty because you, I think you got like every song title off Absolutely. into that soliloquy. Look it up. Okay. Nice. All right. That's, that's awesome. So without further, and, and Jeremy, remember drummer for the, the band Abrasion has drummed in many projects, has actually released a couple albums. So if anybody is qualified to talk about, you know, this genre of music, that we all love. It is Jeremy. So awesome to have you here. Now, after we got done with that cheese fest. Yes. Thank you for putting that together. Tell me. Cause because I, I gotta I'm gonna fucking disagree because I've been spending a lot of time with stick it to you and all systems go over the last couple of days just to refresh myself. Why is all systems go where you think the average hair metal fan should start? All right. Well, I appreciate that. Well, you know, in watching you for months now, I constantly hear um, little snippets here and there about Vinnie Vincent Invasion. And the thing I hear you most often say, Guru, and, and please don't take disrespect from this, but the thing I often hear you say, is, you know, that's a band I just never got into. And, and you're very open and honest about that. And then you're like, I'm going to revisit. I doubt you have until this project idea you and I kind of came with, but Hey, you know what? <laughs> but you have now. And um, if, if, if I could turn five people, 10 people onto the Vinnie Vincent experience, then this is a win video for us. And that's really why I wanted to do this guru. Um, that's what we're here for is to open people's eyes and ears and, and experiences. And Vinnie Vincent with, with Dana Strum, Mark Slaughter and the great Bobby rock. We cannot forget about the powerhouse. That was Bobby rock. The guy looks like a brick shit house. He plays like one. Um, and on this album, you will get some of the best drum fills, best drum licks you've ever heard as a percussionist. And then he goes on to do nitro. And then sadly, kind of wastes his talent away. And Nelson, no offense to you, Nelson fans. I like Nelson. I saw him live. Guru and I are both guilty as charged. But that's the musicianship. Now let's get into the tracks on the album. And, and, and really the reason why I wanted to do this is because there are some tunes on here that I feel stand up with Slaughter Stick It To You. Um, and as my homage right there should show you, I obviously love Stick It To You. It changed my life. But Vinnie Vincent was there first. They got to me first. They got to me when I was just a just a wee lad, as it were. And um, I remember I my brother bought this cassette. Yes, I'm an old fart. My brother bought this cassette in Bismarck, and I actually picked up Cinderella Long Cold Winter the same day. And uh, we were coming back from Bismarck with our parents, uh, driving the old Bonneville, sitting in the back seat. And he opened up his Vinnie Vincent Invasion. And you know how you're always looking for the pictures, as we did. He opens up that jacket, and there's a picture of the singer, right? And I'm expecting Fleischmann. Yep. And here's this studly looking, long haired, 18, 19 year old dude. And I'm like, there's no way that's the singer from the first album. I'm like, there's no way that's him. So we open up the liner notes and read and there's this Mark Slaughter. Well, as we all know, messing with the formula of a lead singer can really bite you in the butt. It just nine times out of 10, it does. However, this was a formula that not only worked, it made the band exponentially better and it was heard from the opening track okay so i'm gonna just jump right in here bud so the album starts off with a song called ashes to ashes and there's some kind of crazy background noise as it's fading in and all of a sudden they get into vinnie vincent's dirty down and dirty guitar riff and it's slow it's sleazy and it's in your face and and, and you literally feel the hairs on the back of your neck and your arms stand up and you're like oh we're on we're, we're on for a ride with this one and then Mark Slaughter's um, voice hey, comes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't feel the hairs on the top of my head doing anything. So I think I have a couple on the back of my neck. But did they move? Did you did you feel those move at all? Oh yeah, they, they're they're tickling right now. 
right on, right on. So yeah, that song gets going and 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 Mark's voice comes in slow and low and it just builds and builds and builds and it gets into that upper range falsetto and you know whatever change they made, it was the right change. And the song just continues on and it thrashes. I would say, I, I know you won't agree, but I would say almost, if not as good as Eye to Eye. It has everything that I love in a rocking song, which is a heavy bass line, a heavy guitar riff, and a lightning fast solo. I know you're not into the the shredders, the guys that can do a 60 per minute. I always was. Yep. So that was great for me. And, and I thought, you know, this album sounds really badass, but I could also tell there was some, a lot of growth that took place from the first album to the second. Everything from the production value, um, the sound quality to Vinny's solos. They at least were in time on this track, Ashes to Ashes. And I was like, okay, he's grown up. He's he's proved to Kiss that he could do 100 per minute. Now it's time to just rock and roll. And uh, that was the opening track. And I was hooked from that point on, my man. Yeah. And and so I wrote I wrote down in my notes, and I, and I told you this earlier, that, well, Number one, the part of the reason I never went back to revisit this album was after the debut. The debut was so over the top, yeah. With blah, 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 you know, and I was like, "Fuck me!" So in revisiting it, you're right. He toned that down. In fact, the guitar is a little lower in the mix. So, um, which so I I definitely like this up now here's what i said about ashes to ashes is is a, it's a decent rock song better than eye to eye okay now we're getting a little bit ridiculous but uh a, a, a solid song and and it's a little to me it's a little weird with the vinnie vincent album being you know the guitars being a little less i almost in a way i almost thought it was too low in the mix i wanted to hear it a little bit louder but anyway i think solid rock song I'll, I'll 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 stop there. It's not better than eye to eye, but continue on with your your expose about BBI. Well, I appreciate your honesty, my man. Like I said, as good, I maybe a little better, but anyway. Okay, moving on to the second track. Okay, and we're not going to go through every track. I, I'm just going to hit the highlights here, Guru, because yep. there is some filler on the album. Yep. In fact, I'm just going to break to those if that's okay. I'm going to go yep. right to the couple fillers, and yep. thankfully there are only two. Um, the fillers that I, I find on this album, and I don't skip them. These aren't fillers that are that bad to where I get to them and I'm like, skip. I still listen to them, but they don't have that grab you by the crotch, keep you engaged the entire time. Right. They don't have that panache. So, and yeah. those two songs are, simply put, heavy petting and deeper and deeper. And no, you pervert, it deeper and deeper is not about what you think it is. It's not about what every 80s cliche is. Yeah, look at all. <laughs> It, it truly isn't it, it you know tongue in cheek is what we're all about in the 80s hair metal but it truly was about at least lyrically about being deeper in love with this girl and, and whatever okay it's lyrically i you know i i know what was really meant there but um the chorus deeper and deeper leaves me wanting more it really does it oh. leaves me empty i i feel like you had me and you lost me on that on the chorus Heavy Petting is much the same way it's kind of got a blues influence riff which is cool Vinny doing the blues slowing it down a little bit but then they get into the, the chorus and it's like a three-part harmony kind of heavy pet, which you barely hear the low register. It again, doesn't keep me engaged like every other track does. So I'm going to get those two out of the way. Heavy pet and deeper and deeper. You're probably not going to want to skip them, but you probably won't go to them on purpose. Let's put it that way. Um, you're going to want to skip them because <laughs> uh, deeper and deeper, those lyrics suck. And that chorus is just shit. Now, heavy petting, I like I like the guitar riff, but when it got to the chorus, I was I was whoa, I was done. And uh, you think those are the only? I'll get when you get done, I'll get into what I think is filler. But but so uh, agreed, those two are are filler, and deeper and deeper is more than filler. It's horrible. So okay, all right, keep going. All right, You're doing a hell of a job, by the way. Well, well, thank you. Okay, so that that takes care of in my opinion. The two fillers. So now we're on. To, I'm like I said, just going quickly through them. Dirty rhythm is track number two. This one follows right off of Ashes to Ashes with up tempo, great guitar riff, and the chorus is fantastic. You got a lot of cymbal muting. Uh, you got Bobby Rock just doing the, whoosh, whoosh, and it's tight. Like I said, the production value can't be beat. It sounds so tight, so 
Dana Strom obviously had his hand involved. Yeah. Um, so bass filled. So uh, every every single note comes through loud and clear. And it's a singable tune. You want to sing that chorus along with it. And that's really what I look for in a good album. So yep. Dirty Rhythm, I would I would put right up there with Burning Bridges again, as far as sing along. You, you're you sure. going to want to sing that chorus along and along. Your thoughts on that track? Yeah, uh, catchy as shit. What, one of my, you know, that's one of the songs that I really gravitate to on the album. Um, you know, chorus is undeniable. So I, I really dig that song. All right. Okay, then uh, we move into the first single. Actually, I apologize. This was actually the second single, but it was the bigger single of the two because this song was chosen for the Nightmare on Elm Street soundtrack. Yep. And uh, it was supposed to almost catapult Vinnie Vincent into another stratosphere, no pun intended, but it truly was. They were really hoping this was the catalyst for him. However, it kind of fell on deaf ears and it made the soundtrack. Um, but what happened is in the uh, the theatrical version, you can hear it loud and clear. It comes through crystal clear. The song is there. It plays a lot of it. But when it came out on VHS, DVD, et cetera, they actually drowned out the song. And you you can hear it in the background, but it's barely audible. Right. So it didn't help them get the recognition that they were hoping to get with this track. But they did have a video for it, which included a lot of the Freddy Krueger references, a lot of yeah. sequences from the movie. Um and honestly, Love Kills, the chorus again, you're going to want to sing along with this chorus. It's it's every bit as solid as like uh, Fly to the Angels. It's, it's, a, it's a, what am I trying to say? A group chorus, you know, where they're all singing it together. Uh, Love Kills was the, like I said, the first video came from that movie. Undeniably great. It could have been a radio hit. For some reason, Vinnie Vincent never caught on with radio and it just kind of fell fell flat. Was, was part of the, so... The two singles from this album were fucking ballads, Love Kills and That Time of Year. So, which in 1988 was unheard of. Yeah. You know, I mean, everyone knows the formula. Start with the rock song, maybe two rock songs. Then go to your ballad, you know, which got to be cliche. But to open up, to, to have your only singles. Now, The Nightmare on Elm Street, you would have thought, that connection would have helped because look what Elm Street 3 did for Dream Warriors and Dokken. That was a big hit. So I really like Love Kills. I don't know that I think it's better than Fly to the Angels, um, but it it is right up there. I'm surprised it didn't hit. Yeah. Okay, right on. Yeah, so th you have that one. Um, then it moves on to Naughty Naughty. And, and how many bands had the two Naughty Naughty? I could, we could think of three at the top of our head. There's probably five to 10, but this was another version called Naughty Naughty. Um, yeah. And it's a little bit heavier in Danger Dangers, uh, but uh, it kind of follows along that lines. It's the tongue in cheek, you know, um, but it has a, a pretty cool chorus, I feel. And, and it uh, has two different parts to it. The first Naughty Naughty goes along with one line. Uh, then it has a little bridge. Then the second time they come around with the Naughty Naughty, it has a different line that goes with it. So it kind of keeps you captivated, keeps you engaged, keeps you going with it. And it's just a fun little sing-along tune with a great rhythm track behind it. Yeah. So again, I'd, I'd give this a solid nine. Um, nothing wrong with this track whatsoever. And then I'm just going to jump into the next one right yep. after to, oh, to finish going. off side number one of the cassette for any of you who have the cassette. So what I just gave you, and then it finishes off side one with the song called Burn. And there's a little intro where you can hear them. Sounds like they might be at a racetrack getting ready for some drag races. You can hear people talking to one another and there's all these background noises. All of a sudden that guitar riff kicks in and you feel zero to 60 in 2.3 seconds. You feel the scrotum going up into your throat. Everything you wanted, man, it's right there and the tires are burning and you're ripping it and uh, you're burning from start to finish and it leaves you wanting more at the end of side one. You just, you that tape shut off back when there were tapes and it was like i'm flipping this over faster than saying all well, has a church service and i'm popping that sucker in and we're rolling so that's that's side one i'm gonna let you go with those last two tracks there yeah uh i really like naughty naughty it, it's one of my favorite songs it's really catchy burn uh well first check out mark scream at the beginning of burn holy shit now i it's a cool song I don't think it's great, but I like it. So it's not it's not filler that you would avoid. It's not something that I would think would be a single, but good song. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so then we get on to side B, and we got Let Freedom Rock. And, and I just discovered something with Guru today, folks. And 
I'm going to tell you right now, full disclaimer, if you listen to the version of Let Freedom Rock without the Star Spangled Banner intro, you are selling yourself short. I don't know why that was on the YouTube version, but if you listen to the 2023, I think, or 21 remastered version of All Systems Go, I can't remember the year. I really can't. But uh, it has the Star Spangled Banner like the original had in which Vinny's doing this tapping thing where he's doing volume swells for every single note. And it is beautifully done. And it's kind of fun too, because it sounds like you're at like a sporting event and everybody stands up. You can hear them raise up. You can hear cans hit the ground. You can hear people coughing, just like you're at a sporting event and they're doing the Star Spangled Banner. But Vinny so creatively does that with that volume swell. The version you were listening to did not have that anywhere to be found. I, I think the remastered one came out in 2003. And oh, is that one? Well, I was listening to, I mean, I 80. thought it said 88. It was just on YouTube. I was writing down notes. And so the, the Star Spangled Banner part wasn't in there. And yeah, which is kind of a disappointment because it adds, you know, and I'm a soldier, I'm a vet, and I love shit that, that is kind of patriotic and Let Freedom Rock is that. Man, it's a great rock song. It's really forward to the floor, up tempo. So really, really dig that song. Absolutely. So long story short, everyone, make sure you listen to the version that has that Star Spangled Banner. It's it's worth the 45 second to a minute or whatever it may be. Um, so that's track number six. Then we move on to the second single, which was that time of year. And as the guru said, they broke the formula. And you know what? We talk about why that album didn't hit. Could this be the reason? Yep. We don't know. We'll never know. But it, there could be some truth to that. People may have heard two singles of this magnitude, this caliber, and said, you know, I don't I don't want an album where somebody has to hold my purse to listen to it. I want to rock. Yeah. You know? And now, that being said, that time of year is a fantastic slower yep. song. Almost more of a mid-tempo tune. Um, it's I wouldn't call it a, a typical ballad. It's a mid-tempo, but it's slower kind of along the vein of uh, either Desperately from Stick It To You or Spend My Life. I definitely like it more than Spend My Life. Um, however, Desperately is a good tune. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's better than that. But it's in that kind of vein. If, if you agree, you yeah. can hear in just a second. I, but definitely worth a listen, fun to sing along to as well. Yeah, and and I really like that song. I, I It's a great ballad. It should have been a hit. But yeah, in 1988... When, when you hear, hey, all oh, your first two singles are ballads, I mean, people really differentiated back then, like, hey, if you're not a rock, if you're not a rocker, yeah, I'm not, I'm not in because you know, ballads are for pussies. Well, fucking, I love ballads, but anyway, um, so I that may have been something that led people to, you know, to to hesitate to go out and get this album, but that time of year is a great song, yeah. And, and again, maybe that's the reason it didn't hit. We don't know. Uh, we went into the fillers. In between those two filler songs that I alluded to earlier, we've got the track called Ecstasy. Now, <laughs> I'm going to pick on you for a second here. We literally, uh, about an hour ago, were sitting upstairs on his couch. I better say, separated. There was there was, there was six feet of separation, folks. We were social distanced. <laughs> Charlie was in between us. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, Charlie's just a friend, everyone. That's so. Right. So uh, anyway, we're, he's listening to this song and I'm watching the face of the guru and it's literally going like this. And I'm thinking to myself, you're the ballad man. You're the self-proclaimed pussy ballad guy and, and you're not digging Mark Slaughter, get, burying his soul to you at the beginning of the song. You're not digging Mark Slaughter, laying his his it wasn't really false that was more of his natural voice his natural mid-range tone on you it, it just serenading you for a minute and, and i'll tell you what folks guru was not digging it however he was open-minded he didn't shut the song off he said let's get into the <laughs> you okay maybe it wasn't but as soon as the uh the guitar came in and everything else got going he said okay that makes it better but it's still not a great song to where I said to you again, I think this song is comparable to spend my life. And you said, okay. So when we get to, to slaughter, spend my life is not, I do. I do love ballads. Spend my life is not my favorite ballad and uh, ecstasy. That is the worst intro. It is so cheesy. So I wrote in my notes, I said, this song ruined hair metal. Uh, this is the kind of shit that that 
we were going, guys, we, we need to move. We need to get a little bit tougher. I mean, if, if new kids on the block sang this shit, I would have been like, yep, sounds like new kids on the block. And it's fucking Vinnie Vincent. Uh, so I hated it. And, and I'm not, like I said, do like this album. But damn, uh, who who approved this? Who up at the record company said, yeah, that intro, that that works. Let's put that on the album. Probably lost their job after this. So anyway, I'm out. Well, you might be right. But, but let me tell you this. I can guarantee you that this album was called the Panty Dropper song when they wrote it. I guarantee you that was what they called this tune. Yeah, but we want... We- we we wanted girls to drop their panties, not God. Okay, so, oh, I didn't get the memo, man. I didn't get that memo. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I appreciated you at least giving it a chance, Guru. I appreciated you sticking with it. Yeah. Here's Charlie. Charlie, run up. Charlie. I heard her barking out there. Yeah, because you're very pretty. Hi, Charlie. See you. Yeah, Charlie's back from from having her puppies. And she got tired of having eight puppies running around by her. And so now she's here and you love being home because we missed you. Yeah. All right. Tell Charlie she's welcome to come visit me too. That's right. That's right. Jeremy's got a full jar of peanut butter and a big uh, baster. (laughs) And he's got a little ramp for Charlie to get. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. All right. You did come down and see the set before the show. I knew you peaked. Usually I give those jokes to Brian, but now. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Charlie, very pretty. You're very nice, and you're very famous on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. And so I I spent I listened to this album three times over the last couple of days, and where I will give it credit is you're right. I hadn't spent much time with it before. It is much better than I remembered it being because again the debut kind of left me like holy shit. You know, so many guitar histrionics that I felt like the songs got lost in it. Um, and Vinny's obvious, you know, I feel like, like on Look It Up, Kiss did a good job of reining Vinny in and letting the song speak for itself instead of, you know, a blazing million notes. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just, Let Freedom Rock was great. Burn is is decent. I really like Dirty Rhythm. Two solid ballads. Ecstasy was a piece of shit, but um, better, you know, so I can, I, 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 I know that I'll be listening to at least four or five songs on this album. I'm surprised it didn't hit the yeah. record label. I think fucked it up by not giving maybe let freedom rock might've been a good opening single. Um, Dirty rhythm could have been a good opening single, but whatever. Uh, yes, I can see why you really like this album now better or 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 promote this album before stick it to you dude i mean hey everybody leave him alone in the comments he knows not what he says okay <laughs> let's get into slaughter stick it to you because I, I, I may i just interrupt you for one please. second my brother I, there was one song we left off okay the, the last song and i'm gonna make it super short because i the last song was breakout and i'm just gonna very simply say this it's another one of those songs, guys, back then it followed the formula. It left you with high speed, high octane tune, um, much like Loaded Gun on Stick It To You left you with high speed, high octane. Breakout is much the same way as that. Don't forget to listen to that last track. It will uh, close it out for you, give you that closure you want. And uh, again, it kind of left me wanting one more Vinnie Vincent album. I'm glad Slaughter happened when it did, but yeah. I, I, I would have loved Vinnie to reform, come back with one more album because it seemed like he was growing as a songwriter. And that's my my end game on the Vinnie Vincent. I, I thought Breakout was, I mean, it was up tempo. The chorus lost me. Did it? The chorus was, but you know, the other parts I was like, good. And then it got to the chorus and and I was kind of hanging. So, okay. okay. Uh, and, and I really, you know, you're... Your musicianship, your years in bands really allows you to talk about the instrumentation and shit where I just always say like, that's good, that's catchy, that sucks. You're like, ooh, it's got this and it does this. And then he steps on the pedal a little bit harder and woo. And I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? So I wish I had been in bands because I probably would have got a lot more chicks if I had been. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Anyway. Um. On to, on to on to slaughters stick it to you and damn this thing was a monster 
18 on Billboard, you know, and I, and I don't know if I should be surprised at that. They had an advantage that not all bands have, having been in a relatively known national band, the Vinnie Vincent Invasion. However, the fact that the Vinnie Vincent Invasion never had a big hit, I think it's kind of a noose around your neck. Like, oh, okay, here, you got another band, but what do you get? You, you couldn't do it with your other band. So why are you going to do it with, with Slaughter and stick it to you? So, like I said, comes out January 23rd, 1990, just in time, in my opinion, before the scene started to die. You know, a lot, there were bands that hit in 1990. Warrants, Cherry Pie came out that year, Poison, Flesh and Blood. But not a lot of new bands were hitting in that year. Yeah, yeah uh, Metal Mike from the 80s line, Metal Cast, we... He and I have both discussed the fact that 19, it almost seemed like the scene was ending in 1990. A lot of great bands got screwed over, and especially, you know, 1991 when Nirvana comes out. But this album had four singles, uh, two rockers, two, two ballads, which was about the norm. Why Vinnie Vincent Invasion? Why their record company? Maybe they didn't want to, you know, float all the money for the videos. So, Up All Night, Spend My Life, Fly to the Angels, Mad About You, produced by Mark and Dana. And Dana and Vinny had produced the Vinny Vincent Invasion. So, that's a little, little bit of info on, on the album. Let's go into the songs. The songs on, on Slaughter, Stick It To You. Now, the, the album had four singles. It could have had more. You know, Def Leppard, Hysteria had seven singles. Brian Adams' Reckless had six, which I think I I just put that on my 1984 episode, which got published last night. Sometimes I get a little bit nervous about talking about Brian Adams or the outfield. Yeah. A little less Night Ranger. But anyway, some of the biggest albums, you know, most albums were lucky if they had three singles. This album had four, but huge albums went over four. And I feel like this album could have done that. So um, I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to start a little bit differently. I'll, I'll kind of go eye to eye as the opening track. It's a solid rock song. I don't think it's single worthy, but uh, Tim Kelly, really cool guitar riff. Uh, it's not a skipper, but it's not a single. Burning Bridges is track two. Well, first of all, it's the ultimate fuck you to a former bandmate. Benny Vincent, you know, talking about how oh, all the shit that that he had to do, whether it was money wise, you know, screwing people over, always having to play extended solos. Yeah. So lyrically, that's kind of ballsy to to you know take on. So it never mentions him by name, but if you know anything about Slaughter or or, or you know eighties rock, you know who they're talking about. And this song fucking rules. It is catchy as shit unbelievable guitar riff i feel like it's potentially a single at least as how catchy as the music is yeah up all night is the big hit on the album uh you know the first single catches on like fucking crabs on a new york city sub subway um everybody loves this song that that chorus won't leave your brain um i'm just kind of going through the, the rocks okay i'm gonna go on to Mad About You. These are the songs that I think could have been singles. And Mad About You was a single. Love the guitar riff. Yep. Um, lyrically, eh. You know, I and I was I was telling Jeremy before we got into this. Part of the problem, and and part of the problem with with hair metal in general is too many of the songs were about oh babe. You and I are so great together and, and we're going to make it. And I love you. And th those are nice sentiments, but it got overplayed. So I love Mad About You. The music is awesome. But part of, I think, hair metal's downfall is so many songs were that way lyrically. Desperately is the same way. Desperately. I'm shocked that Desperately wasn't a single. So catchy. Um, great guitar riff. 
one of the catchiest choruses in in the, this fucking genre, I think. Again, desperately, I want to know if you want me, you know. Uh, that shit kind of left me hanging. So, yeah. singles that I... Okay, so rock songs that could have been singles. Desperately, Mad About You... I, I almost want to say she wants more. I'll get into that. Not quite. Up All Night and Burning Bridges. That's four rock songs that I think should have been on the radio. Then, okay, let's go into the ballads. Now, Spend My Life. I get why it was a hit. I think, well, that, get, I don't know how to say this, but that guitar part, dee, 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 dee. I think that guitar part in that song is kind of catchy. It's uh, kind of... Mm -hmm catchy it's kind of cheesy in a way when it gets into the verses i really like it i think the chorus on spend my life is eh. it was a hit i don't get it i like it i don't love it now fly to the angels definitely and that song would come on to have a lot more meaning after tim kelly died yeah. you know that became the, the the tribute to tim kelly and and different lyrically than the oh babe i love you oh babe i miss you so yes i can see why spend my life was a single and fly fly to the angels definitely single worthy so those are the songs that that i feel could have been on the radio six of them like to give any any commentary on on anything from those singles or those couple extra songs that i talked about yeah well yeah definitely um <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't agree with it, what you said any more than what you said. Um, the only thing I'm going to disagree a little bit about is Mad About You. Um, the lyrics, you know, I never really actually thought that much about the lyrics of Mad About You, truth be told, until you were saying it. Then I was running through them in my head. But what I loved so much about that song and what made that stand apart from some of the others was you finally got to hear his real voice yeah. with the falsetto. Like, I remember that the first time I heard that <clears throat> and he hits that register. Don't you know, no, no, what you're doing yeah. to me? Oh. Ah, you got to hear that beautiful voice without the falsetto, without anything behind it. And it was like, ooh, you kind of wanted that song to continue with just that tone, kind of like the Dizzy Dean wanted to do on Boys and Heat and, and stuff. But um, lyrically, as I was going through it in my head, I never really thought about it until I was listening to you speak. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I hear what he's saying. Um, spend my life. You know, I just, it was the same thing. I know why it was on the album. To yeah. me, it was, it was one that I usually would fast forward with uh, or skip once it was on CD because it, it, I just didn't need it. it. It didn't need to be, uh, for me, it didn't need to be there. Wasn't a terrible song. Just didn't need to listen to it. Yeah. Um, Up All Night, I, you couldn't, can't deny the the power of that song. That was yeah. everybody's anthem, you know. Yeah. Uh, Burning Bridges. I got to be honest with you. I was younger than you when that came out. I didn't realize that Burnham Bridges was about Benny Vincent until okay. probably five years after the album had been out. Yeah. And then I was listening to it after knowing the history of Benny Vincent and Mark and Dana and hearing how they were sued and this, that, and the other. And then I'm listening and, oh, you want to do another solo, pal? And I'm like, wait a second. Go back to the beginning, listen to every word. The, the song had a whole different meaning for me, G. Yes. It was like, all right, he is slamming him hundred times over without, like you said, without saying his name or directly inflammatorily yeah. doing it. And it was so creatively done, dude. I loved it. Yes. Yeah. Um, eye to eye. Yeah. I, I agree with you on that one. Um, she wants more. You thought she wants more potentially could have been a single. It's, I mean, it's, it's a fun song. I don't know if it could have been a single, but I get it's catchy. And yeah. you know, it's about how bitches be wanting to spend all your money and yeah. you know, which was kind of an intriguing topic back then so uh yeah i think it could have been a single but I, but i enjoy it sure i do too i think it would be a great b-side to any one of those singles that they had right so no everything you said uh was pretty spot on my man um i think you know how i feel about this album as well um but mad about you again, that was just the one thing that was sticking out but i was waiting yep. till you were done was just how you got to hear his voice without falsetto and it was a lower register than he normally sings with in uh, which he does on Back to Reality, or not Back to Reality, Fear No Evil also on a song called Get Used to It. So if you get a yes. chance, folks, listen to that tune. But yes. uh, no, 
Fantastic. I love your assessment so far, man. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more, to be honest. So thinking of June was an instrumental, you know, not really. I'm not into those. Don't need to talk. I, I'm not into that. Um, that's not enough. Uh, it's cool. Not a, not a single, but, you know, so even the songs that I don't, th there are songs that I, I really like. That's not enough. I wouldn't put it on the radio, but I, I, I dig it. You are the one mid-tempo decent song but again these are the kind of lyrics that all the the pop bands were writing mm -hmm. and, and like i said it th to me this is the kind of shit that brought about the downfall of hair metal i don't think you know musically i'm i i wish the hair metal bands hadn't strayed away from what they were doing musically you know, maybe toughen up some of the sounds. Warrant did that on Dog Eat Dog. But lyrically is where I felt they needed to grow. And they and they started to in 92 once grunge came out and they're like, OK, all the sex shit and all the oh, babe, yeah. I love you shit isn't going to cut it. So yeah. anyway, I just you are the one. Nah, that's. To me, that was like, okay, we're gonna try to write something that all the girls were gonna like, and 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 it just it aged like shit. Gave me your heart, catchy again. Love yeah. the guitar riff again. Oh baby, you're so awesome. Blah blah blah. Lyrics that that lost me, and then Loaded Gun. I I like it. I don't love it. You know, it's a decent song to close out the album. So. 13 tracks, six songs that I think could have been on the radio, three, maybe four more that I'm like, hey, don't skip that shit. You're going to like them. And then a couple songs where I'm like, hey, I can take them or leave them. Yeah. Maybe on one day I skip them. Maybe on one day I play them. Um, so, you know, not a surprise to me that this that this album went double platinum. Uh, I think if this album comes out in 88, or 89 it, it it's up there five times platinum mm -hmm. you know i think there are more potential singles on this album than i do are on the skid row debut not saying i like it better than the skid row debut but you know i don't think there are six songs on 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 the self-titled skid row that could have been on the radio so mm -hmm. um with that it comes out in 1990. The follow-up, The Wildlife, comes out in 92. We all know about 92. There are some decent songs on the on the Wildlife, but I really felt like they were going, okay, hey, we're going to throw the ballad, the mid-tempo. We're going to give you some of everything, and hopefully something hits. And it just didn't meet the quality of Stick It To You. I liked Fear No Evil, but Fear No Evil came out in 95. Yeah. You know, which didn't stand a chance. There is some decent shit on Fear No Evil. Too they little, too late. Revolution was a big left turn. I know some people like it. Kind of left me hanging a little bit. I thought Back to Reality was a good return to form. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't going to sell even if it was freaking The Beatles' Abbey Road. It, it, it <laughs> so right. it's unfortunate that we only got <clears throat> that that after 1988, Vinnie Vincent has never released anything. No. What, you know, and I, 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 the, the guy has issues. Yeah. Even when you hear about him now, he's, he's scheduling stuff. He's canceling stuff. He's selling shit online for like 500 bucks for something yeah. to be like, like what, what nobody's going to. So the guy obviously has issues. The guy is obviously talented. It's unfortunate that he never, you know, took those guitar and those songwriting skills to more projects. So, yeah. you know, that's that's kind of my spiel. Uh, I'm a, I'm a huge stick it to you fan. I'm I'm not. I'm more of a all systems go fan now. But you know, to me, the choice is easy. How would you like to close? Any final comments? you would like to say about the two albums before we wrap it up? 
Absolutely. Um, I want to say thank you to you, Anthony, and I sincerely mean that, Guru, because I know that Vinnie Vincent wasn't a band you were super sold on. So when we started talking about this project, he you could have easily said to me, you know what, I'm not into that album. I, I just as soon leave that one alone. Let's do something else. You were so, That's what you got to love about the Guru, guys. All of us gurus out there, we know that this guy is going to listen to his fans. He's going to listen to subscribers and he's going going to um, try to do as much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. Try, not trying to give you a big hit so you can't get out the door when we leave, but it, it's the truth. And for you to be that open-minded and give this All Systems Go another chance, it means the world to me. And you seem to actually enjoy a lot of it, which really brought a smile to my face. And that's really all I hope to do with this, this thing. Um, the last thing I'll say about Vinny is... Uh, Vinny, you're out there right now. I follow you. I'm, I'm a big fan of his music. I want one more album. He's he's had Guitar Mageddon on a shelf like Chinese Democracy for 10 years, dude. Yeah. And he will not release it for whatever reason. I don't know if he's uh, um, an idiot savant and he just feels it has to be perfect. Well, at this point, 2024, nobody cares because yeah. you probably won't sell more than 10,000 copies if you're lucky yeah. anyway. So just put out what you got done. You had Fleischman come back to you. You you mended your bridges with them, with him. Um, put out what you have. There are some things you can find if you look real deep. But I just I wanted one more Vinnie Vincent album, and it never happened. So hopefully he'll get his crap together for his sake and for all of us who love his guitar playing, and we get one more album from him. That's my hope. So yeah. thanks for having yeah. me on, buddy. Appreciate oh, you. Oh well, man, uh, I I appreciate. What what do you call people who follow? What with I gurus. Gurus, absolutely. <laughs> We're the gurus. gurus. Okay. We're getting All shirts right. made, guys. We're getting shirts made. I'm telling you. Hey, hey, I am going to get shirts made. And if you I see new what like what I put up at the beginning of the video, like it's going to be something like that. So, so anyway, uh, hoping that opportunity comes out for people here shortly. Hey, man. So Jeremy has become a really good friend. You know, we reached out after he started watching my my videos. We hang out now whenever he comes into Fargo. What a great guy. And he's just the most positive person. One of the most positive people that I've ever met. So being around him just is, is kick-ass. Okay, you don't have to get all fucking sad. Yeah, right. no, I appreciate but it, bro. Thank you. I, I appreciate you 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 coming on. You have, you know, your your past in bands gives you a an entirely different and probably more educated perspective on this music. So it's awesome. Hey, tell us what 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 are we wrong about? You know, is there a shit? Maybe you think that the first Vinnie Vincent album is is better than either one of these. Maybe you think that a different Slaughter album is better than Stick It To You. Let us know in the comments. Tell us where we got it right. Tell us where we got it wrong. Hey, we'd love it if you subscribe. If you like, you you have the option to become a member. Whatever it is you do, I just appreciate you being here. Until the next video comes out, my name is Anthony. They call me the guru. And they call you the gurus, apparently. So we'll, we'll be seeing you here shortly. Take care. Good buddy Ryan here. If you notice all that cool shit that I just said fucking Ryan. Yeah, I was waiting for it, dude. <laughs>